Hello and welcome to Around the Clock. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves. On today's show, we're going to be visited by Rob Scher, one of the members of the Ashland Board of Selectmen. He'll be joining me for our Selectmen's Update. Plus, we'll be talking with, with Rob just so you can get to know him a little better, just in case you don't. We are also going to be visited by Judith Calaro. Uh, she presents History at Play, and we're going to talk about how she got her start in theater, plus her upcoming performance as Krista McAuliffe that will be handled and seen at the McAuliffe Library in Framingham. Uh, of course, we have our ever-popular Around the Town tour. Not too many stops today. Of course, our Selectman's update. So stay with us for more Around the Clock. Welcome back to Around the Clock. We're here for the Selectman's Update, and I have with me today Rob Scher. Rob, thanks for coming on Around the Clock. Well, thanks for inviting me. So this is our Selectman's Update. This is our opportunity to talk through what happened at our Selectman's meeting last night and uh, give you some updates. So the one thing that was different was Joe Mignani, our chair, was on vacation. Okay, yeah. So Steve Mitchell, our vice chair, had the opportunity to run the meeting. Uh, it started, as always, with citizens' participation. Um, we always have someone speak. Yeah, besides John, uh, I mean, uh, Mark Dasoni. Yep, yeah. yep. We had yeah. Steve Morgan from the, fin from the uh, Capital Improvement Committee speak with us last night. We then moved into scheduled appointments, and our first one was with Michael Tarosian from the Ashland Fire Department about the Adopt a Hydrant program. Do you have a hydrant outside of your house, Mark? I do, Rob? and last winter, so I asked Mike if I could get retroactive credit for shoveling last winter, but he said no, I'd have to do it this year. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it a very nice program. We had some, uh, some, uh, some great people came and got pictures with the, of them shoveling out their hydrants and it really is a serious subject of course especially when you get deep snow like we had last right, winter and right. uh, you know it really is an important public service to look around your neighborhood and check for hydrants yep. uh, that need yep. to be shoveled out those those minutes could really be really important in the event yes. of a fire yeah. so and then we had Paul Carpenter show us the new town website, ashlandmass.com. Um, a few glitches still, but uh, I think it's certainly an improvement over what was there. Yeah. And uh, what they're planning on doing is, is some, yeah. the whole it's, calendar. It seems like it. I had actually, before the meeting, I had, had reason to go on the website to look for somebody's contact information at Town Hall and actually found it without any trouble. So oh, good. I thought, uh, you know, then later everybody was saying they had some problems getting on. So, but it looks, uh, you know, it seems like a good project. It looks like it'll, right. hopefully it'll work out yeah. as an improvement. And then we heard from Philip Williams, our um, energy manager regarding the municipal aggregation plan. This is related to how you pay for your electricity on your personal electric bill. Uh, thoughts on that program? Well, I thought, so that was, I think probably, you know, last night's meeting was, you know, as, as you know, of course, sometimes we get into a lot of big issues and they go on for hours. Last night was kind of a low-key meeting. Yeah. And this was uh, kind of almost like housekeeping, but this was, I think, one of the more important, they're all important, but this was probably uh, the most important item of the, uh, of the, of the night that we mm -hmm. dealt with, which is, um, you know, um, you know, the town taking a position to either take out a, a mass contract to help, um, well by mass I mean a lot of people involved, to uh, um, make a deal with an energy supplier to hopefully help um, residents in their consumer electric bill. So, right. you know, and uh, I don't know if, um, did you happen to hear the, up so part of it was that we're going to wait to see what the latest energy prices were and then if Michael was going to, we empowered him to make a deal if he thought it good. So I don't know. Did yeah, you hear I think anything? he heard uh, something like 8.6 or 8.7. So that's so pretty good. Even better than what we heard last night. Yeah. So yeah. So it was so 8.6 cents per what kilowatt hour? Something so, like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so which is and people on the NSTAR uh, default are paying about 10 cents. 10 cents so. right now. So did he actually approve it? And I think he was, ahead? when I spoke with him, he was finishing up the final stuff with it, okay. you know, getting that final number. So, so that sounds but good. Yeah, you know. yeah, so that was good and to hear. So, you know, so later there'll be a lot of public information need about getting right. the word out. So right, and it sounds like the company that we're working with will get information out to the consumers as well, so yeah. if they have questions. That's good, so people get ready to sign up again, I guess. So well, actually, good. what's great about the program that I like is it's an automatic sign up. So everyone in town will get it, oh. and then if you don't want to do it, you opt out. Out of it. Oh, that's right. He's, they said which that. actually okay, makes it easier. So you're going to get these sa savings if you're on the default. As long as you're on the default plan, right? Right. right. So. Yep. 
Good. We accepted one set of minutes, and we had a um, one set of selectman appointments. We finally appointed people to the Road Traffic Safety Committee. Um, we had Ed Berman, David Manugian, and Nat Strasberg for um, town employees, and then Donna Walsh and Izzy es Asenko, Asenko yeah. um, as our citizens. And then at our next meeting, we'll be appointing the Board of Selectmen member um, to round that out and get them started. And that's, a, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's a, it was a great idea that Ed Berman put forth. And basically, it's a way uh, for people, if you have traffic safety concerns or, auto, you know, the streets of Ashland, whether sidewalk issues, speed, signage, it's a committee that you can go to, street lights, you know. So, yeah. um, you know, we're, I think we're, you know, looking forward to that and, uh, you know, having an effective committee to deal with all those uh, issues. Right, rather than us as the board sitting yeah. there and trying to discuss them. This way you have input right. from your your police and your your fire exactly. and, and public public right. works people. So, so that's good. Yep. We went into, uh, we had one town manager appointment. We have a new tax clerk coming in. Uh, her name is Mindy Moraes. So she'll be coming on as of February 22nd, as soon as possible. That's great. Yeah, we moved into old new business. We signed the warrant for the presidential primary happening on March 1st. All right, get out and vote. Get Don't out forget. And, uh, it's a big one. It's an <laughs> yeah. important one. Yeah, and it's interesting. We, of course, we talk about New Hampshire and now Nevada and South Carolina. And, and you know, Massachusetts is Super Tuesday is really right around the corner. Yeah, we'll and be here uh, before we know it. It'll be a big... Uh, uh, you know, so d people take out a Democratic or Republican ballot, and you know it'll be interesting. Actually, there happens. are four parties that you can do. No, you no, can do that. you can do Democrat, Republican, Green, and there are candidates oh, on there the are. Green. I hadn't heard. And then the United Independent, but there's nothing on the United Independent. Okay, so, yeah. hopefully, you're either unenrolled, and when you're unenrolled, you can pick any ballot, pick your ballot yeah. um, or you're one of the major parties. So yes. <laughs> yep. Um, we talked about a Board of Health vacancy, uh, thanks to Ed Hart for his work. Um, we, he will be missed yes. on the Board of Health. We announced our BAA Spring Grant Program, um, so you can start submitting your grant requests. Paperwork is up on the website. We have our runner's breakfast for those running to raise funds for the BAA Grant Program. And I've never, I haven't been to that because, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. That sounds like yeah, because the time. BAA Grant Program is is has been recent since you were on the board last. Well, we had, actually we had, we did have uh, BAA money back when I was on, it was actually But not similar. bibs. Right. Okay, That's so right. it's a little bit, we have a so little bit more little these different. days. That's yeah. right, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have our volunteer breakfast on February 27th for volunteer committees. Good, yeah. Yep. Uh, we just started discussing the override planning for um, forums that we'll be having. Um, yeah, we should probably review that. Yeah, um, we'll be getting those out to people right. soon. So I think just a kind of a summary, we talked about doing a forum in March and one in April and then probably one in May. If I, uh, we decided it was after the annual town meeting and before the election. Right. So to get the information out and, and uh, make sure people understand exactly what they're voting on. Right. Uh, so that's right. going to be. It's going to be critical yeah, that people so, understand it and they can make right. an educated decision. Yeah, and people, so you should look, keep track of when those forums are. And, mm -hmm. uh, and May 17th has been set as the, as the, as election. the election date. Right. So, so it'll be, be on the. It'll be on the town election right. uh, ballot. So you'll have both municipal elections with candidates. With there will be there are two selectman seats up, mm -hmm. and then no, I don't know what else. But uh, and then the override uh, ballot question yeah. will be there. So I think that'll be uh, a busy election. Yes. You know, well yeah. attended. So. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get good turnout. Yes. Yeah. Um, then we talked about uh, joint board of selectmen and town manager goals, and we'll be hopefully setting those, or at least start the discussion at our next meeting or before our next meeting. Yeah. Declaration of some surplus vehicles with the change of town manager. Our current town manager is not using a town vehicle, so we were able to move some things around and actually sell some that, and get some cash back. That vehicle doesn't go for the selectmen to use at various times? No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, as a volunteer, you don't get oh, those kind God, of perks. No one told so. me that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we then went into our town manager reports, talking about an open forum that Mike Herbert will be having on March 8th from 6 to 9 downstairs in town hall. Oh, I think it's a great yeah. idea yeah, that yeah, he's yeah. doing that. Yeah. Just, Just to sort of let people, there. yeah, come yeah. and talk to him and ask questions. Um, we talked about a survey that we're going to start doing, so be on the lookout for that. That'll probably be happening in a couple of weeks. Yeah. 
And that was, it was the focus of that. The, I, I get the impression the focus is on financial and budget questions, although there's others, I would think, as well. I think that you can uh, direct what they ask, but it's really to ask people you know, what they want to see in Ashland, plus what are their priorities. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hop yeah. continues that it was very successful. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we talked about some of the solar projects on House Street and the schools. Those should all be pro um, moving forward and happening this summer. That'll be good to see. Um, and then uh, we had a town meeting update. Town meeting will be happening on Wednesday, May 4th. Um, we have gotten requests for warrant articles and we'll be moving forward with that. And there'll be town meeting forums leading up to town meeting. Right. And again, the other one of the main things in terms of the override that's going to be decided then is um, the the separate question on the the community development fund uh, needs to be approved by town meeting. Correct. So that's part of that. Right. So that's an important part of uh, right. the annual town meeting. Yeah. Okay, and that's the selectmen's update for the selectmen meeting that happened on Wednesday, February seventeenth. Stay with us, and we'll be back with more around the clock. Welcome back to Around the Clock. We're continuing our discussion with Rob Scher, a member of the Board of Selectmen. So Rob, thank you for helping me with the Selectmen's update. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Again. Now we get to talk about you. Okay. About Rob Scher. Um, first of all, how long have you lived here in Ashland? Since 1985. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and what brought, quite a while. what brought you to Ashland? My mother-in-law sold us a condo, a Fafford condominium. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yes. And so we weren't actually intending to necessarily stay all that long. But, you know, we, you know, my wife, Marsha Rennie, of course, grew up here and is a real townie. So the family's here. And then it just, we just kind of fit in here. We started, we had kids. We, we bought a, uh, you know, we sold the condo or actually moved out, kept it for a while, but moved out and bought a house here. So, you know, we kind of, you know, we you know, loved the community and decided and we've stayed here, you know, and uh, so made, made a life I think that's here. a path a lot of people take. Yes, they move no. into a condo, they like Ashland, and they stay as they So we can thank Howard Fafford there for we all go. those people. <laughs> so. so many of them become then, you know, major members of the yes, community because yes, yeah, you realize right. it's a great town. I mean, yeah. I know for us that was the path we took yes, to yeah. come here to Ashland. Right. So. Um, so you said your wife, Marsha, for those of you who don't know, Marsha Rennie, who used to be on the school committee, is Rob's wife, has lived here in Ashland her whole life. Yeah. Uh, how many kids? We have four children, and um, I'd say, you know, one of them's still in high school, so we've raised, they've all went through the Ashland schools, uh, except the last one, she's uh, in a private high school, but uh, right now, so, uh, but, uh, you know, enjoy, you know, we brought up all our kids here, and uh, they're off, you know, either in college or trying to make their way in the world right, right now. So, uh, nice. you know, it's a challenge. Yeah. So, so that was one of the reasons, you know, my, as my, you know, when my kids were younger, actually, I was, of course, as you know, I was on the board um, geez, 15 plus years ago. Okay. And that's when I had young, four young children. That was really difficult time, uh, you know, in terms of timing. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's a little better now. And, uh, you know, of course, Marsha was on the school committee a long time uh, Nine, nine years. Nine years. Yeah. So, and I certainly wasn't going to, you know, I stayed involved in, in the town, but I certainly wasn't going to be on the Board of Selectmen when she was on the school committee. So, you know, I you know, felt that a little more time in my life, uh, which actually may not necessarily be true. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so uh, I thought it was a good idea to get back into it again. Had, mm -hmm. you know, interest in, uh, you know, saw, uh, you know, uh, assuring transparency and, looking at what was happening financially. And then, you know, the selectman last year appointed me uh, to the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and so I enjoy being on that. That was before mm -hmm. as a selectman. So it all seemed to come together, you know, when I heard that, you know, the, uh, Paul and um, who was the other person who didn't? The Mark had left. Mark had left, left. so his so seat Paul had been open since to, August. Had and Paul, been, a long and then Paul time, yeah. had decided not to run again, so similar to Marsha had been seats, on for yeah. quite a while. So I said, you know, let's go go for it and, mm -hmm. you know, get get back involved again on the board. So, so yeah. it's been almost a year. Do you feel, you know, some of the things that you were looking at, do you feel like things are changing or for the better? Or Well, I think it's... Um, yeah, I think we work well together as a team. Um, you know, we don't always agree on everything, of course, and um, you know, it's a it's a process. And but I feel that people, you know, everybody's 
has the right motives and they respect each other and mm -hmm. you know we're trying to do the right thing even if we don't always agree on what it is and there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of complex issues you know of course you know running a town there's all sorts of things that happen you know the, from budget to street maintenance to municipal aggregation plans mm -hmm. to things that you wouldn't really think of and uh, you know it's been uh, it's been a good experience it's been something that you really have to commit to in terms of the time and keeping up on right. things and uh, people have various uh, levels of availability but um, there's always another meeting you can go to or someone else you can talk to. And so oh, there's uh, always another meeting yes, you can right. attend. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, you know, maybe stop by you know, this person's yes, meeting exactly. or that meeting. Right, so, right. But it's, uh, it's been good. It's been an education. You, know, you always learn something new. Uh, you know, things, uh, it's interesting. Some things have stayed the same. The last time I was on the board, other things have changed. But, uh, so what are some of the bigger things that you've seen change since the last time you were on the board, either from how things run versus the community? Um, I would say, well, in some ways, uh, technology and, you know, um, uh, you know, things like Facebook and social media and, and mm -hmm. the use of that. And, of course, the website. I mean, I think we probably did have a website, but, you know, the, um, just the, the interconnectability has changed. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, uh, you, know, um, you know, I'd say the... I'd say the relationship between the two major parts of the government, the general municipal government and the schools are much more integrated than they used to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, the schools used to be, they used to be very separate and, and, and both, I think both, um, I don't know if it's uh, the right, uh, both, I guess, emotionally and also physically, there's more um, integration and, and I think mm -hmm. you're, I'm sure you're aware of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know whether it's sharing of staff or it's just communication or the way uh, the budget process is more laid out and more organized and I mean mm -hmm. I guess more I mean we didn't have so many stabilization funds so the, right, there was always right. those kinds of things going on but so that's been um, I think a little more built up you know and uh, I and I certainly think that since my time on the school committee which was you know about 12 years ago now yeah. um, I don't think you, we overlapped. I don't think no. you were on the selectmen right. when I was on school committee. Right. But I know it was very divisive between school Sometimes committee and was, selectmen. Yes. It could be very difficult. Um, and I certainly feel that there's been a lot of work along the way yes, to no. improve that relationship. And that, as you said, has been very helpful. The discussion, especially now as we're heading into this whole discussion about an override and making yes. sure that all the needs in the community are being met. and. Mm -hmm and all the voices are being heard. Right. So that's been very positive. Yeah. And I think, uh, well, the other, in terms of things that I'm interested in is we, you know, one thing I also noticed that we, in terms of planning and community development, mm -hmm. I mean, we've always had, I mean, uh, there was always a comprehensive plan and all that, and mm -hmm. I, I see those uh, things continuing, but they're really getting very even more important as we approach more, what I call build out or more right. development and then traffic. We set. You know, we set, it's interesting, we set the stage though, that 15, 20 years ago when we built, when the commuter rail station was built mm -hmm. for the rail transit district, that was always kind of the long-term right. plan. And those things are kind of reaching probably the actual development phase. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, I also saw that community development and planning aspect as being very important to being on the Board of Selectmen. And that's continued. Some of the biggest right. issues we're dealing with and will continue to deal with, whether it's the housing production plan, the rail transit district, various kinds of uh, housing or development or um, uh, complete streets. It's mm -hmm. all development oriented, very right. important. Right, so. yeah. And, and as a community, I think people are somewhat, you know, conflicted about, about more development, about oh, making certainly. Ashland bigger. And, um, and that's been a big part of also of what we're dealing with on right. the board. And right. I think that'll be a divisive, maybe hopefully not divisive, but as we move forward with the override and, and trying to make sure that we continue to have strong schools and strong public service issues and, and right. you know, police and fire because Ashland is desirable. People do want to live here. Certainly. It's got the right, pretty good location, mm -hmm. you know, good value for your money yeah. and, uh, you know, be continue to be, um, uh, you know, a desirable area. And we, we do need to, we need to make sure we keep the services uh, competitive and of high right. quality, both right. municipal services and schools, because so, right. we're you know a suburb and you know we've got to be competitive in terms of location. Right. The other thing we of course 
we need to touch on is economic development, which is the right. other, uh, the other big thing, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm you know very interested in, and you know it's great. Beth Reynolds has joined us yep. as the economic development director. Seems like she's hit the ground running, mm -hmm. and you know we need to. You know, as, as we, I think we're all aware, we can't just rely on the property tax to make, to raise revenue. We've right. got to have a good economic development base. Ashland has some advantages, but also some challenges. We don't right. have a Route 9. We don't have a 495. Right. You know, we've got to be somewhere in between mm -hmm. in that and do and develop the right areas. Right. And maintain our quality of life, yep. which, you know, just hitting on another thing is what we were both on the board. This, this um, you know, acquisition by Framingham State of the Warren right. Conference Center, I think, right. You know, I, I think it seems like it's going to be a, a very good deal, yeah, and it could have been, could have been, you know, a whole different outcome right. with a major subdivision going in there, yeah, and yeah. so that was, you know, that was a good, that win. was a wonderful. I think the board worked very well behind the scenes to kind of encourage that outcome, and yeah. so again, we have to, of course, uh, thank Senator Spilka for yes, that for and, that work. Uh, so good. So. Well, Rob, before I go, I have one question for you. Uh -oh. All new guests get this question asked of them. It's not that hard. Don't worry. All right. Is there something about you, Rob Scherer, that mm. not many people know that you'd be willing to share with our viewers? Oh, okay. Oh, none of these. It uh, has to be something you can share. <laughs> Legit, huh? Family, okay. family television here. Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, one thing, I don't know if people uh, know this about, but I was, a, I, uh, I was a social worker, and actually I was a prison social worker. Oh, wow. For four years, yes. After I uh, got out of college, yes. Yeah, back in the... Uh, back in the uh, Early eight, late seventies, early eighties. Wow. Yes. So, right here in Massachusetts, Northeastern Correctional Center. So I was cool. a four years. I worked in the prison. It was really, and I kid kid right out of college. It was really quite an eye opening experience. I can yeah. Well, so, thank you for doing that. Yeah, I'm sure it was yeah, not easy. Yeah. So that's, I guess. Good, uh, I'm sure uh, not many people knew that. Goes back yes, in time. Right. Great. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing well, that. Yeah. And thank you for coming on around the clock. Um, we'll have you back uh, maybe next year to. See how your second All year right. went. Well, thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks for, for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, that's it for this segment of Around the Clock. Stay with us and we'll be back with more. Welcome back to Around the Clock. I would like to introduce you to Judith Calaora. Judith, welcome to Around the Clock. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Uh, we've brought Judith in. If any of you saw the Lucy Stone performance a couple of weeks ago at our Historical Society, this is Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Around the Clock and taking a few minutes to speak with us. Um, tell us a little bit about your history. How did you get into theater? Uh, I started acting when I was actually eight years old. Um, I'm from Framingham originally, and I attended what is no longer, unfortunately, it was Juniper Hill Elementary School, but it no longer exists now. And there were two girls from Boston University who, for their master's um, degree, their thesis project was to come into an elementary school and create an acting troupe. And they came in, in, I was in third grade, and they started at first doing improv games. And at first I thought, oh, what is that acting stuff? And then a group of the kids who were involved came into our classroom, and they had created a gumball machine out of their body. So each cool. person was a different part in the machine, mm -hmm. and they all worked together. And I thought, that's so cool how they're working together, and they're becoming something completely different from themselves. And so I joined right after I saw that and, um, and did my very first show with them, which was basically a, a series of Aesop's fables. And it was sort of, the rest is history. Um, and it's gone on for many years. So. Now, you, you, people, some, I try to bring people that are related or do something here in Ashland. So what's your tie-in to Ashland as part of your, th your acting and theater history? Yeah, Ashland came into my life at a very formative time in my theater career. Um, I was a freshman at Framingham High School, and um, our theater director, Mr. Richard Sosny, who's since retired, took a year hiatus from directing, and we had an interim director named Donna Rosinski, who many people from the Ashland community are familiar well. with. Yep. Um, and she came in and, and did Godspell and Fame as our musicals that year, and um, I met her, and she cast me as one of the disciples in Godspell, and it was actually my first leading role in a musical, and it gave me the confidence that I needed to um, continue on that track. 
And I enjoyed working with her so much that after that, I attended every single Ashland Youth Theater during the summer vacation, mm -hmm. all the way through graduation. Wow. Yeah. And then graduated from high school, where'd you go from there? I attended Syracuse University. Um, okay. The Bachelor of Fine Arts program there is a conservatory style acting program. Uh, it's a very good program in that you're also allowed to go abroad, and their featured destination is London, England, which for any actors, <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's like Disney to most people, exactly. but for acting. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we had a partnership with the Globe Theater. Okay. Um, and so we trained with the masters of the voice and the masters of the text and the masters of movement. Mm -hmm. And for six months, we were working in this sort of sacred space for performers. And on the day of my big performance, I had um, been cast as Lady M in um, Mackers and uh, the play that shall be not be named. And uh, I was in the middle of doing my monologue, I remember. And I, suddenly there were tours coming through, you know, tourist tours coming mm -hmm. through the Globe Theater. And I looked out and I see suddenly a hand waving. <laughs> and I, suddenly I see 40 hands <laughs> waving. And I realize it's um, Donna Rosinski bringing the Framingham High School, because she'd switched to Framingham, right, at that point. drama troupe on their April vacation trip to London. Wow. And just sort of kismet, I was there on stage doing my monologue at the same time their tour was coming yeah, through. Yeah. She and I started go running towards each yeah. other like slow motion. <laughs> da, 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 and it was great. It was really good to see her. And sort of, she said, what are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so it was great to sort of have that come full circle like that. So graduated from college, how did you wind up with your new program, History at Play? So when I graduated from college, um, I came back to Boston, and I'm not quite sure why it was something pulling me here. Mm -hmm. And um, almost immediately after I graduated, I began working for the Freedom Trail Foundation as a okay. historical tour guide and a historical oh, interpreter. Okay. And with them, I portray a woman named Deborah Sampson, who only now students are finally becoming familiar with this name. Okay. Um, but she was the first woman to enlist in the American military disguised as a boy. Oh. And she used the, the alias Robert Shirtliff. And she served for well over a year and a half in the 4th Massachusetts Regiment, fighting very courageously in upstate New York mm -hmm. and digging a musket ball out of her thigh when she was <laughs> shot so no one would discover her. Right. And during the course of these tours, and I've been doing these tours for 11 years oh, now. Oh, wow. And I still do them. Um, it's very close to my heart, the Freedom Trail. I would have tourists come up to me and guests come up to me and say, I want to know more about Deborah. I say, well, I have 90 minutes. I got to tell you about the Boston Massacre and the right. Boston Tea Party and <laughs> Mr. Hancock and Mr. Adams and Mr. Revere. I don't have time to tell you any more about Deborah. And I thought, this is unfair to Deborah. Like, Deborah deserves to have her story told. She's the official heroine of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. for goodness sakes. Right. So I wrote a play about her, a one-woman show, telling her story. And I started to tour it to s schools. And mostly, I found the majority of my uh, viewers were assisted living and independent living communities. Yeah. That they, okay. They require this weekly, not, if not weekly, daily educational enrichment. It's part right. of what they pay to live there. Right, right. And it was a fantastic audience, and they were so giving and so supportive. And they, every time they saw the, the show, they said, we want you back, but we want another girl. Right, we want another story. We want another story. So from 2010 to now, 2016, I went from having one woman, Deborah Sampson, to now I'm on five women, my wow. fifth being Krista McAuliffe, and I developed other shows that have historical influences as well, mm -hmm. including a show based on the characters of Downton Abbey, which oh, wow. people are absolutely nuts oh, for. Oh, I can imagine. Um, with the series concluding this year. Mm -hmm. And so I, I registered my business, History mm -hmm. at Play, a few years ago, and made it my sort of life goal to continue telling the stories of influential but often forgotten women. Wow, wow. So you've done Lucy Stone. What made you pick Krista McAuliffe? Every woman that I portray, I usually um, get a suggestion from someone. Okay. Lucy Stone I happened to find on my own because I actually wrote a women's tour, a walking tour of Boston. Okay. And in doing that research, I learned about the first woman to graduate from college from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Lucy Stone who got Susan Anthony into the women's rights movement, I thought, well, we all know about Susan Anthony. Right. Why don't we know about Lucy? Yeah. 
and then who is also the first woman in the United States to maintain her maiden name when she got married. And having a very unique surname myself, yeah. I've always felt like upon marriage, why would I relinquish my, my name? Right. There's so few right. of few color auras left. Right, right. <laughs> so um, that really spoke to me. So each woman I portray speaks to me in some way and also has to overcome some sort of adversity or some sort okay. of obstacle. Um, my sister's been a great help to me in choosing women who are, I guess you would say, very um, sought after in okay. terms of people wanting to learn their stories. Mm -hmm. She suggested Hedy Lamar to me, who's also one of the oh, women yeah. I portray, um, who's recently received more reputation or right. you know publicity due to her her creating Wi-Fi frequency hopping which is now used for Wi-Fi so mm -hmm. bed spectrum communication she also suggested Krista now um, I grew up obviously framing him right Krista McAuliffe grew up there grew up going to the McAuliffe branch of the public library mm -hmm. um, Steve Krista's husband also resided in Ashland okay suddenly I just realized this woman who I knew so little about, but had grown up with. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like she was, you know, she was very close to my mother's age. I felt like she was my mother. Uh -huh. I knew very little about her, but I knew that everyone knew her. Right. And I said, why don't we know more about her? Like, why don't we know where she was before her NASA stardom? Right, right. And then I started to research and read the novels written about her, and there's a great documentary, and uh, her mother, Grace, wrote a wonderful book, which has sort of become my Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it became very clear to me that this woman was, uh, she was a gem. She was an uh -huh. absolute gem. And uh, it's really important that people know who she was and what she was fighting for, which was education, an educational, mm -hmm. really an educational revolution, experiential learning, hands-on learning. Right, right. Um, so it's been really a... a it's been a, a, a joy and also very nerve-wracking to uh -huh. portray someone so close to so many people's hearts. Especially here in Framingham and Ashland. I mean, there are people who remember her and know her. And, and yeah. yeah, I mean, um, a lot of people know her family still. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I just met her sister the other day um, at the Challenger um, 30th anniversary at Framingham mm -hmm. State. And, you know, I said it would be a, a real honor if you could if you could come, yeah. and, and if she does, it, it would mean a, a lot to me. And, and but I know it's very difficult for some people to see right. this. Right. Right. But what has really been important for me in thinking about this is that if you ask anyone born after 1990 if they know who if they know what Challenger right. was or who Krista McAuliffe was, they don't. They don't. And right. so, for folks who are are uncertain about it or who feel that it's too close to home or it's too soon. She wanted her to be remembered for the work that she did with mm -hmm. education. And if we don't remember to tell her story now, it will be lost. Yeah. Because the people who knew her and who knew her family are not talking enough to the mm -hmm. people who don't. Right. So. Right. So, moving a little fur further, so what, what is the performance? When is it? If people are interested, where can they go to find out? Uh, the performance debuts on Sunday, March 6th at 2.30 p.m. It will be at the historic Village Hall, which is located in Framingham Center. It is a building owned by the, um, or operated by the Framingham History Center, okay. which is uh, Framingham Historical Society, yep. essentially. Um, I believe it's framinghamhistory.org, I okay. believe, but I think if I might yeah, we'll, look we can right get there. It. I think we'll, we'll be showing it as we're talking. Okay, great. So, um, if you are interested, uh, you can purchase tickets ahead of time as recommended, right. um, as it may very well sell out. Sell out. Um, Framinghamhistory.org. You can purchase tickets there, or um, there's a number to call that okay. I'm sure we'll get that up on the screen, on so you'll be seeing it now. Yeah. Good. And so, yeah, Sunday, March 6, 2:30 p.m. And it's they're going to have uh, the Framingham History Center is also going to bring out relics from Krista's life, oh, um, nice. anything that they have in their collection. I have a few items that okay. have been lent to me um, that were, you know, personal items of, of Grace Corrigan's, and um, it's going to really be something, something to, to hopefully to remember. Well, I can tell you're passionate about this and that it means something to you, and I think that's great to see in a performer that you take it that personally and. And you feel what's what's going behind the story, and that that's a great thing to see. So, thank you, thank you for coming on around around the clock. Thank you. Um, I usually ask a question, and I'm still going to ask this question. And I, I'm you'll have a lot of things to be able to share with people. I ask first times guests if there's something about you, Judith, that many people don't know. So I know there are some people here in Ashland who are good friends of yours, um, but is there something that people may not know that you'd be willing to share with our viewers? 
Um, okay, something. Well, some people may know this uh, who grew up with me, okay. but um, I actually have a black belt in martial arts. Oh, wow. um, I study. I started studying Tung Soo Do, which is like a style of South Korean martial arts. Chuck Norris does Tung Soo Do. That's okay. how most people Ooh, know. Okay. <laughs> no, I, um, I started when I was, uh, I think, about six or seven years old at Juniper Hill, where I was in elementary okay. school, and then I s switched over to the Framingham Y, and then we switched over to the Framingham Civic League, which is right on the Ashland yeah, border. Yeah. And um, I actually got my black belt when I was about um, 13, and wow. then I studied Kempo and Jiu Jitsu in college, and I am on a commercial airing in South southern Massachusetts and most of Connecticut where I'm like doing martial arts. It's for like the Connecticut lottery. <laughs> cool. So there you go. And that's a well, little that's random fact. Great information. Mm -hmm. Well, Judith, thanks again for coming on Around the Clock. Good luck with your first Krista you. McAuliffe performance and uh, I hope you get to go enjoy it. Okay. Thanks uh, for watching this section of Around the Clock. We'll be back with more. Well, it's time for our Around the Town tour. We're going to start by first looking at our Adopt a Hydrant program, then we're going to be talking about some snow shoveling techniques, and we're going to finish up with the Ashland High School Theatrical Society's production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. So let's start with our Adopt a Hydrant program. The Adopt a Hydrant program is being sponsored by the Ashland Fire Department, and they're asking citizens to adopt a hydrant in their neighborhood, go up on the Ashland Fire Department's website, let them know what hydrant you've adopted, and then, as an incentive, we're offering Papa Gino's gift certificates. So we were able to present our first three winners for January and half of February, and that was done at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, so the first three winners are Jace Ra, who lives over on Hardwick Road. He was so excited to do it that one morning before school, he went out and shoveled his snow, the hydrant, uh, uh, snow around the hydrant. Uh, the second is George Henry, who lives over on Warren Road. Uh, and the third one is Jeffrey Patton, and he's doing two hydrants, one on Catherine Drive and one on Suzanne Drive. So congratulations to those three winners. And if you'd like to participate in the Adopt a Hydrant program, you can go to the Ashland Fire Department website, let them know what hydrant you've done, and then when it's snowing and you've shoveled, submit a picture of your clean hydrant to be considered for the next round of gift certificates. Now, speaking of snow, it's been a somewhat light winter. We haven't had much snow, but just in case we have some more, because it's only the middle of February, so we still could get swamped, uh, who knows, um, we'd like to show you and share with you some, some snow shoveling techniques so that when you do have to go out there, you don't injure yourself. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Saban from Fitness Together. Today what I'd like to do is talk to you about some safe snow shoveling tips and tricks. So what we're going to show you today are different ways to warm up, get your core temperature up, and get ready for that snow shovel. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is some marching. So just standing in place, you can just bring your knees up, right? get your knees high as you swing your arms back and forth. Of course, like I said, that's going to get your heart rate up. It's also going to loosen up your legs, your hip flexors, and get you ready to go outside. After that, you can do a push-up. You're just going to grab on to the surface, bend your elbows, and extend back up. All right. So you can do some of those to warm up your shoulders and your chest. The next exercise I can show you is a squat. When you do a squat, what you're going to want to do is get your hips back, your arms out in front of you, sit down as deep as you can, and come up. Another exercise to warm up your arms is just simple shoulder circles, getting your shoulders ready. Since so much of shoveling involves twisting, right, now ultimately when we go outside you'll see we're going to try to not twist our body too much while shoveling, but because there is some torque on the body as you're shoveling, you can also do a chop to warm up for that motion. And for that, we're just going to put one foot forward and the other one back. 
You can also do this from a kneeling position. But when we do this exercise, we're going to start above one shoulder and pull down towards the opposite hip. So we come up and down through that motion. Okay. One more exercise that I can show you to get yourself ready and warmed up for, for snow shoveling is a hamstring stretch. Right. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I find the safest way is if you just put one foot up on a stair, on a box, right, and you reach down like you're going to tie your shoelace. This will keep your back somewhat flat. You'll feel some stretch underneath the leg that's elevated, right, and that'll give you a hamstring stretch on the elevated leg. All right, hi everyone, we're back, and I just wanted to uh, welcome you outside and finish up our shoveling techniques today. Uh, obviously, I'm all layered up, nice and warm out here today. I uh, want to make sure that we do this right. So first thing I want to remind you is that when you're shoveling, to take your time. Don't feel like you got to do all of this at once. All right? So make sure that as you're shoveling, if you feel like you need a break, take a break, catch your breath, come back out and start up again. Uh, the other thing to, to keep in mind is that when you're shoveling, make sure you just take small scoops. Right? You don't have to fill the shovel each and every time, right? but you can take small shovels, move the snow, and go back and take a second pass at it. Um, other things to keep in mind that I'll show you here is when we go down to, to scoop some snow, we want to dig in and push the snow forward rather than trying to dig in and twist with the shovel at any time. Or if you're moving snow across, let's say, your driveway, you just want to push it and slide it through right, and use your legs to push that snow forward as opposed to taking shovels and dumping it ahead of you. Right? Also, as you're going across the driveway right, or across your, your sidewalk, as you're pushing that snow forward, like I said, try to push it as far across to the other side as possible. Don't lift and twist. Okay. Um, other things, when you are dumping the snow off to the side, make sure you turn your body towards where you'd like to dump it. So if I scoop using my legs ahead and I go to put it off to my right side, I want to turn my feet to the direction and drop it off, not twist. As I said a few times now, make sure you bend your legs. You don't want to lean over and dig in not using your legs. We warmed up before doing squats for a reason. Always make sure that you bend your knees deep, dig in with your arms, and lift that snow. All right. um, those are probably some of the best techniques I can show you today. If you have any other further questions, feel free to give me a call. Uh, Bob Saving at Fitness Together, uh, or on the web, ftashland.com. Thanks. Well, hopefully you've gotten some new information about how to shovel snow safely. Uh, so that the next time we have snow, you can go out, take care of your driveway and your walkways without injuring yourself. And don't forget your neighbors if you have elderly neighbors who may need a hand. And don't forget those fire hydrants. We're now going to take you over to the Ashland High School as this part of our tour. We had the opportunity to speak with a number of the cast members of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. The production is going up the first weekend in March. Uh, as always, it looks like it'll be a great show. Uh, it was a show I wasn't that familiar with, but there's one song called Everybody Ought to, Had a Ma Ought to Have a Maid that I do know. So, I hope you enjoy our interviews with the cast, um, and I hope you get to go out and see the production. Hello, we are taking around the clock on a little bit of a field trip. We are at the Ashland High School Auditorium, and we are here with two members of the Ashland High School Theatrical Society's production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. That's a lot of words. I have Zach Schiffman and Matthias, shall we, oh, I forgot his last name, Matthias. Sardina. <laughs> Sardina, okay. Now, uh, we've spoken with Zach before on this show for some of his other productions. Zach, tell us what your roles are for this production. Uh, for this production, I'm in, um, my name is Pseudalus. Uh, I play a slave whose goal is to get free, to be free of his master by hooking up his master with a girl that he's interested in. But shenanigans follow, you know, big messes, the usual. Okay, shenanigans, that's, that's good to know, because this is a show that I don't know much about. Matthias, what is your role? Well, I'm Senex. I'm also known as the Dirty Old Man. Um, 
my role mostly consists of me going after the supposed maid that Pseudolus is trying to hide from me, and the rest of the musical is just me doing that. <laughs> okay, so this is a musical. Uh, how many songs are you guys in? Matthias? I'm in... M me, I'm, I do a duo with Pseudolus, which is um, made. Uh, everybody ought to have a maid, funny enough. And also, I do one with my son, which his name is Heroes, so always Marcus Illingsworth, uh, which is impossible, which is us basically dissing each other, saying which one's better for Philia. Okay. Now, that's a song I actually know. Everybody, also ha everybody ought to have a maid. Um, th so that's one that's known. Uh, Zach, what are you singing? Um, I appear sporadically throughout the show. Um, one of my big numbers is free. And near the beginning of the show, it's very. It's about being free. It kind of introduces that concept that's played with throughout the rest of the musical. Um, there's, a, there's a lovely song that I sing with, um, with one, of my, one of my friends, uh, Matt. Um, just kind of here and there. It's just very fun. Now, Zach, this is your last show with Ashland High School Theatrical Society. Thoughts on that? Uh, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very sad. It's been, this is my seventh show now with Ashland, with, um, with Mr. Harrington, it's very, um, you know, I try not to think about it too much. It's, it's very, it's all coming together. It's, it's been such, it's been so great. It's been just been so great. I'm and plans after graduation? Um, I, I plan to study um, chemistry, physics, hard sciences. Um, not quite sure where yet, still waiting on that. Um, but, you know, just go where I can, keep studying. Something will happen. Okay, good. We're continuing our discussion with some of the cast members of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. As I was looking through the cast list, I recognized some names of past students who have done work with Mr. Harrington through the Theatrical Society. So that's who we're talking to now. All of these students have had siblings that have had some, at some point participated in the Theatrical Society productions. I'm going to start right here. Please tell us your name and your year and then pass it on. My name is Evelyn. I am a senior this year. And I am the Gemini. Uh, my name is Jake. I'm a junior at the high school, and uh, I play one of the Proteans. I'm Caitlin, and I'm a junior as well, and I play Panacea, which is a courtesan. I'm Danielle. I'm a junior, and I play a Protean. I'm Colin. I'm a junior, and I'm Protean as well. Are any of you considering doing theater after high school? In some form or other, yeah? So are you looking, so you're a senior. Are you looking at schools for theater? Uh, no, I'm actually looking at schools for engineering, but the majority of the schools that I'm looking at have a strong theater department, so. Okay, good. Well, thanks for speaking with us. Uh, break a leg on your performances. Uh, listen to what Mr. Harrington said. Make sure you review your lines <laughs> over, her, over vacation. And uh, thanks for speaking with me. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's it for this episode of Around the Clock. Uh, it's getting to be spring in about three or four weeks, so hopefully we won't see too much snow. Um, I want to thank Rob Scherer for coming on and helping me with the Selectman's update. I also want to thank Judith Kalara for coming on and talking about her History at Play program. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Around the Clock. Make sure you check out our Facebook page because we're always posting things that are coming up, whether it's sports or events or meetings. So we'll be back in March. Happy end of February. Mm -hmm.